most of them are new especially things that are uh, most of these things are like crypto native things they uh, they don't have like a proper web2 analog so i'm gonna like uh, lay out uh, what we are going to talk about today and then like uh, we will uh, go into each one of them uh, step by step and after every topic i'll take a pause and if there are any questions uh, you can like unmute yourself and like ask me and i expect uh, this to go on for like uh, 45 minutes uh, to one hour and depending on the questions like we can extend it further also i'm available so guys we'll get started so like the earliest uh, version of games that have happened on chain are like ponzi games these are like uh, like very scammy and like very uh, edgy kind of games i'll, I'll just uh, show you one of the uh, implementations of such a ponzi game uh, yeah just uh, yeah, so guys, uh, here is one implementation of such a Ponzi game. So in this Ponzi game, uh, we just, there is a pool. And then in this pool, uh, you can uh, bid or add to the pool as long as your bid is greater than the last bid. And then uh, you know, as soon as uh, you add to the bid, the uh, time bomb uh, of the pool uh, gets reset so the pool winner will be the message sender and the pool amount will be greater than message value as long as the message value is greater than the previous bid so like as long as people keep alive and we have kept a time bomb of uh, uh after you have bid nobody is bidding you can claim the price so that is essentially what this does right like you uh, i i need to do few more checks here i uh didn't implement uh, it fully so as you can see like here uh, anybody can claim the price but it has to be the uh, last uh, winner who, who can claim the price but essentially these were the kind of uh, ponzi games that were uh, implemented on chain uh, way back in uh, 2017 or uh, 2018 these were the very early uh, kind of games these are like not cooperative these are very uh, yeah as you can see like these sort of games like won't sustain and for long but uh, yeah they they, uh, they make money for uh, some people so yeah, like uh, there are various variations of this, uh, these sorts of Ponzi games, and I'm not going to uh, go uh, deep into this. Uh, but uh, yeah, just wanted to give a historic context uh, so that everybody here is uh, uh, yeah aware of uh, what has uh, happened. And then, uh, like once these uh, Ponzi games. Uh, sort of happened then there were like various sorts of like profile picture games and so these typically were related to identity and the most famous is crypto punks i'm assuming like everybody here is aware of crypto punks so i'm uh, not gonna go deep into crypto punks today and i will switch gears and i will now talk about on chain uh, a generative art the few interesting projects here uh, that i will uh, go deep into uh, that i'll spend brief briefly about deaf beef entropy and animal coloring book these are uh, two interesting projects and then there is a third project called nouns and nouns will go slightly deeper uh yeah if there are any questions happy to take them before we move to next topic yeah if you have any questions you can just unmute yourself and uh ask questions i think this would be a good time to ask questions
cool guys i think like i'll move on to the next one so in terms of like uh the topic the next topic we have here is called this def beef entropy now what is def beef entropy let me open my browser okay so def beef entropy is uh like uh it's a project that is uh simulating uh uh the uh music discs that we have like the music discs uh as they uh like the song as songs are played more and more they uh they'll lead to uh there'll, there'll be degradation of those uh discs and this particular project is uh simulating that uh sort of thing wherein uh as the uh nft or the token that gets uh that changes hands more and more uh, similar to the song that gets played on the disc loses its uh, uh sound or degrades it uh, its uh, uh properties uh, auditory properties this also like degrades its uh, auditory uh, properties it's actually a sound and uh as these items uh, change hands more and more they lose their uh, auditory quality so let us hear to hear it. now Yeah, now this particular thing is like completely generated on chain and now as people share it, uh, as people not share it, as people like transfer it, like as ownership changes between hands, the audio visual here uh, gets degraded and degraded just like uh, a physical uh, music uh, that is on a disc that gets degraded over a period of time as uh, people listen to music more and more. So this is the core idea of this. And then like everything here is like completely open. The contract is here and then like how it is coded, everything is right here. So here it's like trying to uh, capture that physical embodiment of like uh, music on a disc. So this has been like a very interesting uh, project. It hasn't like uh, taken off, taken off, but uh, it is uh, very interesting. So, and then like there is uh, another project that is uh, the opposite of this. So over here, uh, things are getting degraded. There is this project, an animal coloring book. So in this project, things get added. So as like there is a cat here, now I uh, send this cat to Harsha on a blank, like uh, this particular thing is completely blank. Now, this is the opposite of the previous project in the sense that now I send this white colored um, uh, image that has nothing to Harsha. And then like once Harsha uh, transfers it to someone else, there'll be uh, some sort of like uh, facial uh, uh, thing over there and then eyes show up and then colors show up one by one and then after four transfers uh, the whole uh, picture shows up so we are in a sense like collectively discovering this artwork by uh, trading this uh, between us so I send it to you, you discover the eyes and he sends it to someone else and we discover the first color and that particular person sends it to someone else, we discover the second color and so on. So all this is like completely on chain generated. And if we look at this, uh, there is eyes here, there is various sorts of uh, like, but typically it's like uh, four or five colors that they use and the number of pixels is also pretty limited so that on-chain uh, generation is possible. And then these guys also have another companion project called Erasers that's also pretty interesting. 
So what uh, Eraser does is like, uh, as soon as you use an Eraser, you can use the Eraser only one time, but as soon as you use the Eraser, you can uh, erase the properties that were discovered by uh, ascending the NFT. So what I didn't tell here is, this also takes into consideration who I'm sending this NFT to. So based on the address of the receiver, it sort of like changes some of the colors. So if you don't like the eventual colors that turn out to be, you can use this eraser and sort of like erase the items uh, and erase the uh, properties that have unveiled. So this is like, this project is like the opposite of uh, def beef entropy, right? Like in that project, uh, the NFT is degrading over time, but over here, the NFT is uh, getting better and better over time. It is uh, as more and more transfers are happening, uh, more and more interesting things are uh, shaping up. So these were like two very interesting projects I came across and uh, yeah, guys, before we go into nouns, I uh, want to take uh, questions. Uh, I'm not going to go into the code of Def Beef Entropy or Animal Coloring Book. They're fairly simple for anybody who has done programming. Uh, but essentially, I want to touch on like the ideas that are there here. Like, I haven't come across anything like Def Beef Entropy or Animal Coloring Book in a Web2 world. These are like completely on chain and like things that people would try only on chain kind of things. Any, any questions at this point? Uh, Green B wanted to ask a question. Green B, can you unmute and speak? Sorry. Uh, let's just wait for 30 seconds. I think uh, she has a question. Yes, guys. So if there are no questions, I'll move to the next topic. But if there's any question, like just feel free to unmute yourself and like ask me uh, anything don't hit uh yeah i do have one question can you guys hear me yes yes i hear uh, you. So, yes, yes we can hear so as far as i know crypto punks is just an nft right? so why have you included it under on chain tools So why have I included it on chain games? I think like uh, a lot of derivative projects and a lot of like uh, things that we would see more and more are inspired from CryptoPunks and like, that's like a Genesis project, right? Like it is, there's now like a um, PUBG like game that is getting created using uh, CryptoPunk identities. There is now like various other uh, derivative projects that are doing uh, all sorts of things using uh, CryptoPunks. So uh, it's like the identity layer that people are putting to use in various sorts of games. So that's the reason I had included it. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, guys, uh, I'll move to the next topic. Here, Bilash, sorry, I couldn't ask the question before. Sure, 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 please. Okay, so just curious, these games look very interesting, uh, especially for the Dev Thief game. Uh, at one point, all the sound quality will reduce. So how do you visualize uh, the popularity of this game? I'm just curious, what is triggering this game to be more and more popular? Because the last, the last person to purchase the NFT is not going to receive good voice quality. Yes, that's a great point. I think also it's the, like the whole point of that uh, experiment. 
it uh didn't take off hugely but like i think it is a worthy experiment in the sense that like some people have participated and like explored the limit of what uh that sort of degradation could look like so in that case like the whole game or the whole intent is to like uh, buy early or like buy uh experience the quality first kind of uh ethos yeah but right. you're right it is not like it hasn't taken off uh, like other projects i imagine if it was the voice of an actor wishing someone personally happy birthday or something and then over a period of time it would have degraded then i think it would have taken off for sure this is crazy yeah likely those are all various possibilities uh guys so i will move to the next a very interesting topic there's this project called nouns and um uh, so if you guys are like aware of like crypto punks and like various other sort of profile picture projects so the all in all those profile picture projects uh, the number of uh, profile pictures is scarce so scarcity uh, equal to nk profile pictures or some number some number of profile pictures now what these guys did is we won't do scarcity but uh, we'll do abundance so there'll be one profile picture uh, that'll be dropped uh, but one every day forever and that's what uh, nouns project did and all these pictures are generated completely on chain and it's been like 63 days of uh, 63 days since launch that's why we see noun 63 here and every day uh, auction runs and yesterday it was bought for 148 day before is today 128 uh the day before that okay so so what these guys did like the founding team uh they said every uh, 10th noun for the first 5 years of the project will be sent to their multisig so in all uh, in all eternity or the lifetime of this project only 90 uh, nouns will be uh, owned by the uh, founders the founders own uh, nothing else and the treasury if you see here which is at the top this treasury al- already has like 8178 ethereum so whenever there is an auction that happens all of this money goes to the treasury so this 158 goes to treasury this 158 it also goes to treasury so the treasury is worth uh, 27 million or 28 million dollars as on date and now like they 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 like challenged uh, the status quo in multiple uh, ways right one uh, they said uh, there's not going to be uh, scarcity there's going to be abundance second they said uh, we as founders we are not greedy we are only going to hold 90 nouns rest of the nouns will all be owned by the community and now whoever owns a noun like these 58 people who own nouns these 58 people control how this 28 million dollars will get spent and there is a dao uh, that now has 28 million dollars now this dao has to figure out how to deploy that capital so that the noun ecosystem itself grows so one level they challenge the status quo is by saying instead of scarcity we will do abundance second level they said will only hold 90 nouns in the entirety of this project so it's very much like we'll give back everything we are creating to the community and it's a very non greedy move by the founders that's the second thing the third thing is uh all the founders over here uh they are mostly uh pseudonymous pseudonymous so if you see uh there is uh the one of the founders id is punk4156 so he's he's the guy uh, who basically uh, tweeted about uh, this 
nouns project and then got uh, all this like 10 people uh, to launch this project so he calls himself punk 4156 and nobody knows who punk 4156 is and it's it's anybody's guess right like 4156 uh, who is that it could be someone in our circle it could be somebody he may be in this room maybe not in this room uh, like nobody knows but essentially there is that mystique uh, that is uh, getting uh, carried uh, because of uh, pseudonymity so like they went pseudonymous they went for abundance they didn't uh, uh, launched a project in a way that is not very greedy. The founders only have like 90 nouns in the eternity of the project. And then like the community completely owns uh, the nouns to completely owns this 27, 28 million dollars. Now, what do they, what are they going to do with this uh, 28, 29 million dollars? That is where the DAO comes into picture. Now, anybody can go and like uh, submit a proposal here and say, I'm going to like make nouns 3D. Then I'm going to give nouns 3D authors. Somebody said, let's donate five Ethereum to these charities and they have uh, donated it. And then like someone else is saying, let's uh, introduce uh, actions for these nouns. These are nouns, but they don't have behaviors. Let's introduce verbs uh, for these nouns. And that got executed. And then someone else is like doing uh, a bit uh, attendance uh, integration. And that has a lot of works. And anybody can like go uh, pitch a project here and also in the Discord and get people to like, uh, you don't need a total of like five words. It already has like 22 words. And yeah, it's pretty uh, interesting what is unfolding here. So uh, this like, note that like all of this has happened in like the last 63 days. And it's not like this project has started like two years ago and so on. It just started like in last, uh, yeah, the first auction happened like 63 days ago. And the ethos of this project was like challenging uh, whatever other uh, profile picture projects were doing. And then like the team is also like decentralized, pseudonymous, nobody knows who is who. Maybe like people know Dom Hoffman, he's the founder of Wine. And probably like few people here but most of the people are like pseudonymous so this uh is like the most interesting uh project uh, i have uh, came across uh, recently in terms of like the governance and then like now you uh on a noun you get to be the person who can control this 28 million dollar treasury you not just own a noun but it's for real now you control the DAO. Uh, so beware as like if you uh, own a crypto punk, uh, you don't like control a treasury. You can just trade your punk, but like that's all where it ends. But over here, you actually control this treasury. How do they and I'll show you. Uh, hey, Abhilash, I have a question here. So how do they communicate yeah. this messaging? Like uh, this is this is all about building this game part right like how do they make this grow like where does this blow up how do they ensure because everybody is pseudonymous here and what do they do which encourages more people to purchase the nouns or spread the word yeah like over here like for example 4156 this guy has wrote on august 17th so he's saying the nouns treasury currently has 3.6 million usd if you are a dev who wants to build something on the nouns protocol i'll personally help you write a proposal to unlock funding from the DAO. so he is involving the community he is like uh getting everybody excited about the nouns DAO, and he's saying he will personally write the proposal even and get it executed 
so like this is august 17th and 3.6 million now it is 27 million dollars in the treasury and yeah it has almost become 10x uh since he has written this and still the number of projects etc that is getting built on top of nouns project is uh pretty limited it is uh let's go see here let's go to docs like over here like everything is there like there's this discussion forum for nouns there is introduction all sorts of things yeah like if somebody wants to like go check out the whole noun protocol there is even like all the smart contracts are open sourced uh, everything is open like then this is the whole timing diagram they have for the bidding etc how would they yeah, have got the initial have... treasury in that case? Because this is an equivalent of asking, how do you get your first thousand users in Web2 World, right? Like most of these guys uh, who are in the founders, uh, the founders or the founders of Noun Project, uh, they have like 10,000, 20,000 following on Twitter. Okay. So let me show you. Like Crypto Seneca, I think, uh, yeah, he has 21,000 followers. And then, like, the Super Gremlin, he has 11,000 followers. Yeah, they had some distribution, but it's not like, uh, like, some of it also got built up after the Nouns project. Uh, mm -hmm. But, like, they still had, like, some uh, following before they launched the project because like they were part of this ethos and they were like constantly like tweeting and talking about interesting things in this space got it e boy how much 9000 followers yeah like most of them like don't have uh, real names as you can see like it's called punk 4464 yeah but Okay, like they were existing users, but they have renamed their uh, usernames to something so random, right? Like I know some of them no, have I created the like, uh, accounts they, there. Uh, they like, were in the space for the last like two, three years or more. And maybe even more. Uh, but like, uh, I assume like a lot of their following got built up after they launched the known project. It were like some of them would have had like some initial following to kickstart the project got it got it got it yeah yeah and, and then like they had these sort of like playground etc so that people can uh, generate play around with it like there are all these like attributes right like i can generate the playground to generate like nouns i can play with these like five layers one is around what glasses the nouns have and one layer is around what the headgear should be one layer is around the accessory one layer is around body color another layer is just background and what is this one okay this is something i do not know yet yeah another one is like whether it is tiled or scaled view basically Sure. So uh, they had like these sort of tools that people could take a look at uh, the nouns even before like, uh, yeah. This, yeah, this is very interesting project. I think everybody should check out uh, this one. This is not on OpenSea, right? This is on their own site. Yeah, like, and then like, uh, Okay, let me let me show one thing. I can go through all this code. It's pretty straightforward. But I just want to like uh, talk about this particular SVG. This is pretty cute and like it shows how the on-chain rendering is getting done. So the code exactly uh, generates the SVG the way uh, this GIF is happening here. The GIF is unfolding here. So 
yeah i want to like just pause here for because i feel like this is like super interesting thing that they have done like the solidity code is generating this svg by rendering it in this manner i i love this gif and the code everything is like explained here like in detail whatever is happening And the auction mechanism is like pretty uh, straightforward. Cool guys. Uh, I think um, this is about nouns. So we have talked uh, this far. Now I'll, I'll take a few more questions before uh, we go on to text games. Is there any, any questions? I don't see any uh, Razor fans in our DMs. So I think you can go ahead to blush. Cool. Uh, let's go to text games. Data completely on chain. So this one is very interesting. So this is an on-chain contract that uh, generates interesting setups. So you just say roll random, it generates an interesting uh, NFT text. You again say roll random, it again generates interesting text. Uh, and if we go look at the contract, it has, it has 10,000 transactions. So the contract is like pretty simple. So let's just uh, scroll to the interesting parts. Yeah, so basically what this does is like the first NFT and then like uh, it picks the category and uh, it basically is doing a concatenation of the uh, string over here. So if we like, I think I missed there, like there are a whole bunch of strings here somewhere. Yeah, so I will uh, Yeah, action by a DAO word, 4% with none, whole bunch of strings. So this is a project uh, that uh, I have looked at and I uh, experimented with a project of my own. So that project, it's called NFTs Against Humanity. So the idea is to like, uh, there are all these texts, but most of the text generation itself is on chain and done by the contract. I was like, can I like involve users to input their text and like create a card game? So what I did was, uh, I'll just show you for those who don't have context. This game called Cards Against Humanity, it has uh, a question, set of question cards and a set of answer cards. And then like uh, once this black card or the question card is, a question is asked, like the players would like uh, take out their white cards and the funniest black white combination would be the uh, winner. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how the game proceeds. Uh, so what, uh, I decided to do was the game not simulate the gameplay itself, but uh, I tried to like create the game creation itself on chain. I wanted to make the game creation, take the game creation on chain so that anybody can like mint a black card or mint a white card and the community collectively uh, creates a game. So that is what uh, I tried to do. 
and uh, let me show you the code corresponding to it. There's a very simple ERC uh, 721 URI storage contract, and it has just uh, a couple of functions mint white or answer card mint black or question card and the user has to input a text on it and i restricted the number of black cards 200 and then like it, it makes it first come first mint and the white cards i kept as unlimited because they are answer cards and any any number of cards can be minted and then like i said to everybody uh hey uh, on december 1st we're going to take some sort of a community vote and we'll release the first edition card deck and similar to nouns DAO, we'll set up a DAO, and all the sale proceeds from uh, the deck will go to this DAO, and the minters will get to decide uh, what happens to the DAO treasury so it's completely community created and community owned uh, card game and completely built on chain. On chain gives the provenance or the proof who minted the cards, and all the money from the card sales goes to the DAO, and the DAO itself will be controlled by all the minters. And the first edition we plan to publish on December first. Uh, so essentially, like a bunch of elements, like I uh, got inspired by a whole whole bunch of these projects. I took up the DAO idea from nonstop and then like I took up the text based uh, idea from uh, Def Beef Setters and then like, I added my own twist of like uh, not having the text in contract but like asking the users to input the text uh, so that like we have variety and so on. So we are. Uh, We have like 42 cards uh, minted so far and very interesting mints uh, people have minted like all sorts of interesting things and yeah it uh, keeps on growing by the day and uh, the black cards are like the question cards and then the white cards are like the answer cards with satoshi bitcoin plunged after elon must tweet it dash the real goat is dash <laughs> love the feeling of dash in my wallet yeah, I would swap dash for dash. I would take a dash over Bitcoin. Yeah, very interesting mints. Uh, and we are like uh, planning to unveil this on December 1st. So this is uh, one of the uh, projects I have very recently launched. And like, uh, yeah, we, this is a wholly community owned and also community created card game and uh yeah it's completely going to be run by DAO. guys any any questions yeah Bilash, i have one question so the uh smart yes. contract that you have written for this it automatically uploads to OpenSea. So the way OpenSea works is like any uh, ERC20, ERC721 contract, uh, like, okay, let me show it actually. Um, where is the... Polygon... Okay, so now there's this contract address, right? This is the ERC721 uh, contract and what, uh, this is like my NFTs against humanity contract. Uh, so um, what I'm gonna do is open C.io. And then like on open C, you can search by this contract address. So now uh, the uh, NFTs against humanity this particular string it is picked up uh, from the constructor so my constructor where is my constructor yeah here so from my constructor nfts against humanity this is picked up 
and then because it is an ERC721 uh, from the address, it is able to search and pull out this collection. And against this particular address, there are 42 items already minted. So it neatly shows them. Understood. So in fact, Thank like you. you can think of like uh, ether scan as a UI layer for programmers on blockchain, uh, OpenC as a UI layer for NFTs on blockchain. Nice. So this and then what else? Okay, guys. So we have covered till here. We talked about the origins of on chain, like Ponzi games, and then we talked about generating art over here. There is degradation over here. There is enhancement and the feeling of like discovering coll uh, collectively over here there is a DAO like in crypto uh, punks like you own a punk but like so what kind of thing but with nouns like this DAO has like 28 million dollars now if you own a noun like you control this uh, treasury so there is very strong incentive like to be part of the non -stop. and then like we talked about on-chain text games we talked about the status so the text is in contract and then we talked about cards against nfts in this uh game like uh, we tried to uh We try to like uh, community own owns it, and then community created, and then community control as well. Like it's like nouns project. All the uh, money from the card sales would go to the DAO, and whosoever cards are included in the deck, they'll control the DAO. Cool, and then like. Uh, uh, a film director recently contacted us and he asked if he could involve his audience or his following uh, to write some dialogues for his movie on chain so that there is provenance and then like if he may want to like include some of those dialogues in the movie uh, like Harsha is uh, working with a close uh, working with a film director and he brought this use case and while well, like we quickly like hacked a uh, contract for it so over here there's this lifeliners and then uh Hasha said he wanted to see like a white on a black kind of card so we just have like one a uh, single function called mint line and then like uh we uh, the director can now like give this contract address to his followers and then they can um mint an interesting one liner or a dialogue that gets included in the actual movie so it's like you're not just involving your audience after the film releases but you are involving them um uh, up front even before the movie is released while it is being made so that uh, sounded like pretty interesting to me and he wanted to call it lifeliner so it's one other experiment uh yeah we just like uh, quickly hacked together uh yeah yes yeah. yes uh, so how does uh, OpenC uh, like generate the JPEG? Is that on chain as well? Like the white background and like the dimensions and maybe all all that aspects? No, no, that is not not there. I'll I'll show you. Okay, there is this contract, right? Now in the contract, the let's go to read contract, and let's go to token uh, URI. This method is there. On every ERC721, this method is there. Now let's input one. Like as soon as we query, uh, it gives us some response, but why am I not getting anything? 
Okay. Let me go back to the contract. Read contract. Let me do 23. Okay, for some reason, like uh, the response, the SVG resp the base 64 response here is not showing up. But okay, let's take loop project. Uh, I'll show you here. Go to token URI and then like query. Okay, now we have this uh, base 64 response, right? Okay. Now base 64 decode. Now this is decoded. Now this has, okay, let me try to paste it in a JSON linker. Now, when I pressed on this uh, token ID 23 and queried it, queried on-chain contract, I got this base64 response. Now I took this base64 response and then I decoded it. When I decoded it, I got a JSON. And when I got a JSON, it has three attributes, name, description, and image. And in image, there is again a base64 over here. So let's let's again decode this base sixty four. Now oh, let's decode it. Now, if we decode it on uh, the base sixty four of the image, we see an SVG. Now let's go view the SVG. This is how uh, OpenSea uh, displays uh, the on-chain uh, content, on-chain images. So it calls this token URI method. When it calls this token URI method, there is this base64. And then the base64 is decoded. When it is decoded, it shows that name uh, like this thing, name, description, image, and then in the image, the, again, there is a base64 inside a base64, which is this. And if we like again decode that base64 image, we get this SVG. And then this SVG is finally displayed. Okay, so uh, makes sense. Uh, how, how did you uh, like work backwards though? Like, uh, how do you like when you're writing the code? What, what was the process? Yeah, so so now, now we know that the token URI is the method we need to implement, right? So we go to code and then like we uh, scroll down and down and down. And then, okay, let me directly search for token URI. Okay, so over here, the token URI method is implemented. So over here, uh, that function is like returning an SVG. And not just any SVG, but something that is base 64 encoded SVG. And yeah, now you know that there are a few contracts which have done this and like you just like copy paste this code and then like you fine tune it to fit your purposes. Okay, makes sense. So That's you know sense. that there is a base 64 library you need to use. So you'll include a base 64 library. And let me show you more. This works for like so image. Which, uh, yes, like yes, how please. Do you, how would you do it for like if suppose instead of minting SVGs, you wanted to mint videos, like short videos. So how would you store that on chain? Like would you use like something like uh, IPFS or something? So your question is, instead of SVG, if it is a uh, short video, what do we do in that case? Yeah. I think in case of SVG, I think people just return a, uh, like over here, the image will just be a URL instead of data. So 
I will store it off chain. They won't store it on chain. They'll just say IPFS colon slash slash something something. Or like if you're using like cloudflare.com slash one two three. So you can do like of using like this on-chain data and completely storing it on-chain people also do this but if people are using a web 2 product it is generally despised so tip people typically do ipfs or rv or one of these other uh, storage services So, full um, director involving community option to write movie one liners. That's so cool. So, we have covered these topics on chain text games, on chain generative art. Now, uh, shall we like go deep into a uh, loop project or? Should we move on to the next set of things? Is everybody here aware of Loop Project? Uh, I think you can just give a very uh, quick context about Loop Project, like how they've grown really big and uh, what they did. Okay. Loop Project is this basically this contract. So this is loot uh, contract, right? So over here, and this is created by Dom Hoffman. And basically what uh, it enabled people to do was mint uh, adventure gear. So if we go to loot for adventurers, The, vo the volume of ETH that is traded is crazy, like 68,000 Ethereum is traded. So Loot has like this uh, adventure gear for uh, in a fantasy world. Uh, and it has like what rings, what dress, what headgear and all sorts of things. And this is all there is loot there is for loot and now what happened on top of this was a lot of people started um building on top of this so if we go to these resources people have built uh a katana garden uh people have built like divine roles like all sorts of projects are based on the attributes uh, the adventurers have in their bag. So the attribute is uh, what is defined here. So there is there's one adventurer who has wool gloves. Now if he has wool gloves, this is how his world is going to look like and all sorts of things. So none of these projects are like live live yet, like in the sense that like they're still like getting built. So this is like very unique to Web3, right? Like you sort of like build a community first and then like build things together with the community. You discover things together with the community. Like at PUBG, uh, if somebody wants to launch uh, now, like they can uh, like build it on top of loot or they can like launch their own uh, PUBG sort of thing. So this is a very interesting uh, way to bootstrap a community that is very native to web3 and uh, yeah like I, I like i want to repeat it again like there's no way these many projects uh, could have been built uh, if it for if it was not on chain and like there's one guy who built how to give a name to these loops and like all sorts of uh, projects that got built uh, for uh, people who own these uh, loot NFTs. So this is loot project. Uh, guys, I think I'll, I'll take some questions. I know way too much about this project. So uh, I'll just stop here and like take some questions and 
proceed based on the questions. Yeah, so this is this project is a shining example of bootstrapping your community uh, using a fair minting scheme on chain. Hey, so can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Cool. So as you know, I'm becoming aware of all this kind of projects. Uh, it seems to me that everything nowadays is turning into games like uh, the uh, seems like can you even employment is turning into games like this this concept of gamification gamification in web 2 people have been trying to gamify uh, learning as well but uh, uh, that's this company uh, rabbit rabbit quest uh, rabbit rabbit hole so they have this little you know quest where you can uh, learn some skills and you will get some so it seems that gamification just works by default in on-chain projects. So what do you think about that? I, I, gamification, I, I think like building a complete game experience on-chain is still difficult. People are just storing either the end state of the game or the game items others own uh, in the game, uh, things like that, even in Axie. The game itself is not on chain. Only the assets uh, that people own, they are on chain. And uh, uh, yeah, so the real time uh, aspect. Uh, 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 by gamification, I mean not creating games. So game is, gamification is basically you take a certain task and you give, you provide some task and you give incentives and to players and so on to parties, concerned parties, and they have to do that task and they have certain, you know, challenges and so on. So you can even gamify, let's say, and a job as well. So it is a different, totally different concept. It's not actually a game, but it's like, you know, how can you convert a real world task into games, like taking the uh, principles of games, how, like how they work, like incentive structure and task system and so on and turn real pro real task into games. So uh, I mean that by gamification. Right. So, yeah, uh, so got it. Yeah, like I haven't like uh, come across uh, those sorts of things yet. Like the where things are at right now is like people still are like trying to Mm -hmm. do fair means and like trying to bootstrap their communities the real world uh, aspects uh, getting influenced by these games uh, I think I haven't come across any example like that yet uh, but maybe it's possible maybe somebody will build something uh, yeah we, we uh, yeah, never say no in web 3 <laughs> great yeah thanks Yeah, so um, the, this loot has inspired like a bunch of other projects also. One of the projects is called Footyverse. I'll just show you. So these guys, uh, they have the same contract like loot but um, they are uh, bootstrapping uh, uh, a fantasy uh, football uh, league. So they have like position, who is the goalkeeper, etc. What are the mental attributes? What are the physical attributes? What are the skills, the player special skills, visuals, celebrations uh, that people do and then like by just doing this, uh, they have gotten eight uh, 22 people to their community, which is sort of like uh, crazy, right? Like they have uh, built uh, out of nowhere by just uh, deploying a contract. Uh, they built a community of 800 people. And like, if you look at like the fantasy games and those sorts of uh, companies, they typically have a community of like 10,000, 20,000 people. 
that are doing volumes of to the north of like 100 200 million dollars so they already have like 800 people and they can leverage these 800 people to build more things on top of it and they've also like uh gone pseudonymous when they launched like footyverse like they didn't launch on a particular name and then like if you go to their discord also like okay uh, uh that's uh Hey, it uh, looks like there is some issue. I'll just uh, check back. Uh, hey Abhilash, uh, it got disconnected in between. Oh damn. So till till what point did you guys hear? I was talking about this developer DAO NFTs. Yeah, a couple of uh, minute and a half. Okay. Uh, let me also open Footyverse. Uh, can you uh, sh share your screen again? Oh, I need to share my screen again. Okay. Okay, you're able to see my screen? Uh, yes. Got it. Okay, we saw Loot Project and uh, this tried to do model the, uh, a universe that is football by using something similar uh, by basically taking player attributes 
like fantasy football can be built on top of it whole bunch of things can be built on top of it for the asset they have built using an on-chain contract is this community of uh, 100 200 or 500000 people and then the other project that did something similar uh, to build the community is this uh, developer dao again they are trying to model the uh, world of developer by using the developer attributes and yeah so this is uh, this is a stuff like a crypto native growth hack for web3 world because these people who are minting these nfts they're putting real money and seeking uh, uh, to be part of a community so they are invested in the success of the community from get go from day zero it is a level of commitment that is much higher than just joining a discord because they actually put money into uh, put, put money to come join the community so something like this like i have never uh, seen in web2 uh, this is very uh, web3 kind of uh, community building that these projects have pulled off developer dao foodiverse and uh, loot project and they're like i'm pretty sure there are like 10 more projects which would have built their communities like this yeah so this is a great way to bootstrap your community if you're thinking of building a game so none of these guys have built anything yet but they have gotten the community together now they will build something on top of this whether i'll take a pause Yeah, I think Sahil has some question. He has unmuted, but I think because of the noise. Okay. So this guy is developer down, right? They are creating this another project on top of those NFTs. They are trying to convert those attributes into, you know, uh, images form. Like if I have got OS like uh, uh, Mint, say, then they will convert this into a form of an SVG image. So that's what they are trying to do right now. Um, I'm gonna write that right now in the community. Many, many interesting projects are uh, built, being built right now. Yeah, guys, makes sense. Um, yeah, so I won't go into on chain TikTok, uh, but if somebody wants to, they can follow me on Twitter and engage in a conversation with me. I try to like think about what it would take to uh, do an on-chain TikTok and build a community to bootstrap it. I won't go into detail. Yeah, like you can engage with me on Twitter on this, but I want to like talk uh, a little bit about launching your own game or launching your own uh, stuff. And okay, let me try to increase the size of this. I'm not able to increase the size of this thing. Okay guys, so if you're launching your own game, like here are some of the things you may want to think about. One, going pseudonymous versus using your own name. And then like mechanics to attract your own tribe. And uh, if you're using your own name, uh, it's a lot of issues with using your own name, right? Like uh, if you are already working somewhere, your existing employer might may not like it. And uh, like having a... Uh, mask uh, is also like gives you superpowers and optionality like if the project becomes a failure like you can uh get a restart and launch another project also so like you don't have to like have a fear of failure uh and like if you are using a pseudonym's name like try to use some crypto native name and like launch using that name instead of using your own personal name uh, because yeah like you can avoid a whole bunch of consequences and uh, it also levels the playing field when you use a pseudonym because uh, people will be like 
people will be guessing right like who is this guy with pseudonym it could be somebody who is really experienced in the industry or it could be somebody totally new but nobody never knows so it creates that mystique which is in the favor of new people coming into the ecosystem so if you are somebody new coming to the ecosystem you may want to use a pseudonym uh, because the odds are in favor of a pseudonym right now uh, versus uh, using your own name uh, yeah so that is one of the things i have seen repeatedly with these profile picture projects nft projects and whole bunch of these community building projects there's some people using their own name also but you can use uh, yeah pseudonym also so i'll say launching your own game or community and then like whether you want to generate artwork on chain or off chain uh, this is very specific to project and the mechanics to attract your tribe 10k versus forever drop various projects doing it like developer of footy words etc and if you have founder rewards keep it non-greedy like in case of loot uh, out of the 10k kept 200 for themselves in case of founder now announced project and they took 90 for uh, in the next five years so try to keep it non-greedy uh, if you can and then like publishing code creates trust and a lot of other people can also participate and if you're targeting indian audience ethereum won't work likely matic will work uh, because the gas fees is much lower on matic but if you're targeting global audience ethereum uh, will be the right choice so a lot of choices you need to make uh, based on the specifics of your game yeah so any any questions at this point <coughs> Actually, I have a question. Uh, so, like, this is like specific to like the project you are building, but uh, like, what what things do you think are important to keep like on chain that should be on chain? Like, there are project which uh, requires some of the things to be like not on on chain, but like, what are the things that you uh, like? You think that should be on chain, like it shouldn't you shouldn't put it off chain if you can. I think ownership is something you may want to model some of it on chain. Like you know, everybody has to feel like they're a founder of that project, right? Like the whole community. Like for in Footyverse or developer DAO or this loot project, people will feel like that. And in my cards game also, I tried to do that. Like anybody who is minting a card, uh, yeah, they are the owner. And in nouns project also, they make them feel that way in the sense that when you mint a noun, you can control the treasury. So if you have some of those ownership mechanics built into the project uh, at the very core, uh, that is what will drive the community because now you are no longer one founder or two founders building the project but you have like 100 people who are the founders of your project and all these 100 people will be contributing in their own way and you basically decide what is the value of those contributions the community itself decides what is the value of those contributions as opposed to crypto punks right like there is ownership but ownership is at the level of individual punk not at the level of community in nouns DAO, the ownership is not only at the level of individual noun, but also at the level of community, because now you control the community using the vote. By controlling the community, you are controlling that $28 million treasury. So if like you give people those superpowers to be uh, owner instead of being a community member, I think uh, those mechanics will make the community uh, fly. Yeah, basically any like any uh, power that uh, that the community uh, have to modify the protocol or whatever the uh, contract you have built, right? Or have a say in that uh, change. Yes, yes, yes. So they have to feel uh, it's uh, their own project. And that happens like a lot of magical things unfold like in loot project there are hundreds of projects getting built 
on top of nonce projects hundreds of projects are getting built so when wherever the community element the community ownership is strong people uh, contribute and build on top of it <coughs> guys any other questions here yeah, bilash uh, as we were talking about the you, you can say pubg rpg game on on chain in the uh, nfts against humanity wala uh, matlab channel so what are your views on it like the rpg game on chain can you please share your views on that hey i'll answer that but before i answer that i want to share uh, something i had put up for a friend but uh, i want to share with everyone else here um yeah. you're able to see my screen yeah cool so like in cricket like uh, the sheet has like all the attributes celebrations mental attributes of players visuals bowling pace like you can write an on chain contract uh, to generate a fantasy cricket player and then like uh, put it on chain and you can build like all sorts of things on top of it you can build a fantasy cricket league or you can build uh, i don't know stick cricket games or whatever 100 different things so if uh, somebody wants to uh, do this i'm happy to uh, share this with you uh, you can like uh, yeah i'll share this excel sheet and you can also this is also a good way to uh, put whatever we have been discussing to a test right so we have been discussing that like we can model a universe we can model a cricket universe football universe fantasy universe or various sorts of universes and like where blockchain is right now we can get a community involved from get go now if uh people are meeting these fantasy cricket players and then uh, a community of 500000 people uh, is accumulated in discord uh, what will unfold on top of it uh, i do not know maybe it could become uh, something huge um yeah if somebody is planning to do this like do it on polygon and yeah go for it pull the trigger uh i'll be happy to give a shout out uh, on twitter and wherever i am on social media and yeah do it pseudonymously uh, and uh, do it on polygon and copy the contracts uh, we had mentioned today and yeah it's uh, you uh, if you have learned a few new things today this is a good way to like put them to test with least effort in the sense that like it won't take like more than one hour or two hours to deploy this to polygon now for me back to your question on rpg um i am uh, not an expert in rpg uh, how those communities function and what they care about but if you can get to the essence of uh, the that game and the attributes of that game and model it as a on chain contract and bootstrap the community and build on top of it that will be fantastic so over here in cricket players are at the center in football players are at the center so we are trying to model that in that fantasy uh, adventure game uh, like uh, they are trying to model uh, the adventure gear which is what defines the powers of the players and whole bunch of things and the developer dao uh, is basically trying to uh, model the skills of a developer so if you can like identify the core aspect you want to model in your universe and then like uh, generate a random nft and build a community around it for your rpg and uh, yeah i think that will be a valuable asset that community in itself guys so i will uh, share this on discord and anybody who wants to uh, ship it like feel free to jump on it cool guys i'm gonna uh, stop screen sharing and we can take some more questions
awesome thank you so much ablash for that uh folks you have any questions you can shoot them here open to all sort of collabs and uh, happy to help in all ways i can uh yeah like whether it is like community building or like uh, your uh, contract uh, review or any of those things um yeah i'm uh, myself like experimenting whole bunch of ideas and happy to collab with anybody here super uh, i was asking like shall we drop the cricket project on ethereum or matic what will be better go for a good deploy on matic i think indian audience uh, it will be better if we do it on matic yeah too much gas fees with ether Yeah, I'll, I'll share I'll share the link. If you are excited by the cricket community building, go for it. I'll share that uh, doc with you. Yeah, please, please send me. Yeah. Cool. Uh, if you have any further questions or you want to discuss further, you can always post on the general channel or uh, DM Ablash on Discord. Awesome. Thanks, Ablash. Uh, thanks, everyone, for. staying here and enjoying the stock i'm closing the stream now